Greetings everyone and welcome back to Mech Engineer. Where in the last episode we have cleared out another base, or rather we've cleared out the surface of the base. Don't get confused. We have not cleared the base out. Apparently that is a uh, task significantly above uh, the point where we're currently at tech-wise. We should not even consider doing this, according to the comments, which I'm not going to lie, just makes me want to try it even more. But I'm trying to be sensible. Yeah, I, the comms have given me some amazing uh, advice regarding the pings, specifically nowhere near ready for this one, possibly not ready for this one, but these two are fine. <laughs> Apparently the, the red one would have been fine, except, you know, it's far away and under a bunch of biomass. But, uh, you know, I'm going to try and try and not let my hubris get the better of me, as it so often does. Nevertheless, welcome back. Now, we're going to start off today, as we often do, with some new nests. Uh, Christian Seas 8132 and Grubbyfoot both have isolated that uh, 2111, X2111, and X2112 must be nests. And if we have a proper look at this, that is in fact the case. If we have a look here, this one can see two. Presently, uh, that uh, so we need at least one more somewhere around here. Now, this two there can already see both of its nests. So the uh, nest that this one can see can't be in the uh, top row or the middle row and the two down here uh, sorry the the one over here rather i should say can already see its nest so it eliminates the first column and the middle column the left column and the middle column meaning only the bottom right can possibly be a nest so we can mark that one in now the thing about that is that since this is itself a two and it can both it can see both nests we have completely eliminated all of these nests this uh tile right here has to be able to see four but the only place the other two nests can be are down here now the beautiful thing of having a two right next to it means that once this one can see one more nest and it can only see nests in these areas once this can see one more nest it's seen all of them and this four right now there is no combination of two nests that at least one of them is not in full view of this too. So, with that information, we know that the other nest that this tile here can see, that is uh, X19, Y11, has to be in either X20, Y12, or X19, Y12. So given that information, we know that only one, one and only one can be in these two tiles, but we still need to find a fourth tile for this one. And since all of these tiles are excluded, then it must be down here. So we've isolated another two nests. Well done, super sleuths. The uh, citizenry of this walking city are very, very wise, and uh, they are doing a great deal to further the, uh, the objectives of humanity and to get us off this horrible, horrible alien infested rock that we once called home. Thank you very, very much. Now, with all of that done, I think it is, in fact, time for us to move. Now, someone did say, don't forget to nuke this city. And there is some wisdom to that. If we want to nuke it, doing so now would be wise. But I am going to say that I'm not going to just yet. Because we don't know if we want to move down here. And I only have one more nuke. And there is quite a, quite a strong possibility that if, if we can, I would like to just march in this direction and away rather than have to hang out down here. Uh, sorry, go through the water. A lot of people have been saying that water is is awful early on. So we're, we're going to avoid that just yet, so it means I'm going to sit on this one nuke. We actually have more rockets, I believe, than we started with. So very interesting to note. But it is finally time to pass the day. Let me just double check. Yes, everyone is in the hospital as they need to be. We are going to get a new plate, and we're going to get a lot of new auxiliaries as well. So uh, let's go ahead and click the big red button, shall we? Okay. I really feel that we need more, more like, audio feedback for clicking that button. <laughs> I don't know, it just doesn't feel tactile enough for me. Uh, but there we are, we've got a plate made, which means we've now got five new, uh, new bays open up in sequence, so we could possibly look at building a size plus weapon. We've also finished the research on the, uh, the um, anti-meteor gun. Greatly affects the overall efficiency and number of wounded, what? Oh, right, oh, never mind. I'm looking through all of that. Uh, but that's wonderful. Let's uh, go ahead and check out how that went. We've just got 265 engineers back, 80 scientists back. That is actually 
enormous. We've got 127 science, uh, scientists and 388 engineers, and we're going to be using quite a lot of them on building the new mech. Tomorrow we're going to get some components, a new cockpit, and uh, a new reactor type, which I'm extremely excited about. Now then, as for updating the city, King of uh, Bengland mentioned that he has read that, that the city damage will not begin to be fixed until all wounded humans have been cared for. Good to know. So with that in mind, as much as I am very tempted to continue building up artillery, also on that note, how many artillery shells? We, we only got one shell, so that hasn't really changed very much for us. Uh, but as, as much as, well, I mean, we do get wounded humans uh, uh, help with that. That being said though, I think maybe going for the medical departments is is the uh, is the good move here, and certainly life support systems are the lowest on the on the tree right now. So I think, sure, let's get the both medical areas. I think these two fully upgraded, and uh, maybe start pulling down that city damage. It is going up very slowly, but it is still going up, and that's not something that I'm particularly excited about. Now then, let us have a look-see around here. Where are we going to go next? We've got a nest here. We're fairly certain that this is going to be clear, but that is water, so we don't want to do it. We've got this one. That's fine. We ooh, Volcano right in our path. Maybe a no-go there. We're going to want to clean these areas out. We've got two deserts with only um, Ares and Operarius. This one only has five nests. This one has 17 nests. This one still has 23. I guess we haven't actually removed any nests, so why would that be uh, be any better, though? Interestingly, if we look at this, that one has to have four. This one has to have four. Hmm. That has already seen three. I suspect... Well, there can't be one, one down here. We know that for a fact. So this would allow us to move through, but this one does see through. Oh, actually, it, I, I was forgetting that it can see itself. So yes, th this one, that, there isn't a nest down here, at least. That is useful information. All right, well, I think we're probably going to go for this one, try to clean up both of them. Uh, it's, neither one is going to be super nice for us, but uh, we should just start cleaning them up a little bit. I want to see if this one has got two Brugas. No, it seems that they only regenerate back to one. That's fine. We can live with that one. But I think it is uh, high time that we go and check in on our new mech. But before I do, we are also going to move the Shellcracker back, and we're going to move Mr. Brown back, as there is a potential that we're going to want to play with those. But we... Another Mr... We can't have a Mr. Pink. Fine, we will have a Mr. Green. There we go. Uh, <laughs> that is That is a very temporary name. I don't know what we're going to go with this. Uh, but we can see that we're going to pop on a cabin. As for the motors, do we have enough? I do believe we do. I took a special care to make sure that we did, in fact. And then as for orcs, uh, let's just throw a couple of things on we know we're going to want. We can have one repair drone. I'm actually tempted to put a CRAM on there. Uh, but let's pop in an armor module instead. Now this... Fire's near, uh, nearest enemy missile uses kinetic type weapon. Ah, it actually does use ammunition. I wonder how quickly this drinks ammunition. That's going to be something to keep in mind. All right. But now it's time for us to look at reactors. And we have no reactor set up just yet. But I think we want to make a uh, high-powered reactor. Now, we've got the overcharge. Increases output by 5%, reducing cooling power during restart by 20%. Now, this one is interesting. As I, th ooh, I, I'm not sure I would want that instead of resistance, though. Because this all gives us cooling power and resistance. This would just give us more output. Now, to be fair, you would want to put this on a high output um, reactor to get the most bang for buck. You know, 5% more of 5 is a lot worse than 5% more of 500, for example. Um, I think we're just going to go with this one, though. We'll start this one up. We already know that this configuration will work. There we go. So we're going to pop that one into Mr. Green. Let's get you in there. And that gives us some options with weapons. We've got three weapon slots. 
and we've got a bunch of new weapons. We've got quite a lot of uh, energy weapons that we could play with, and I'm very tempted to. But let's first and foremost check out the Tesla gun. Tesla cannon fires lightning at the enemy. Okay, not, not a huge range, similar to uh, regular energy weapons. And actually doing regular amounts. Uh, just pop it like that, just tuck you in there. Okay, nothing. I was kind of hoping that we would see chain lightning, if I'm perfectly honest, hence going for this, but it uh, doesn't look like we've got anything like that. Um, I, I'm struggling to see what the difference is between this and a regular energy weapon then. Uh, well, we can certainly play around, if nothing else. Right, first and foremost, has it missed a single shot? Accuracy is 100%. We do not need to give any accuracy. That is very nice then. Instead, I can pump all of the points into just regular damage and then all of the remainder into rate of fire. Okay. It's uh, appreciable damage. Only only 19, actually. This is this is very low compared to, uh, to the regular laser. Uh, if we triple uh, wired it, triple red wire, it would cost 44 energy, weight 17, damage is now 36, which isn't so bad. Uh, we definitely want all weapons to not try to attack any further than this. Sure, we'll pop that one right there. Okay, that's, that's good enough. Uh, about 400 range, somewhere around there. Now we get to play around. Now this one is definitely going to increase it because it's going to push more power into it. Up to 73 power now. Damage is 89. The rate of fire went up significantly. Oh, my uh, my mouse is in low battery. Let me just uh, switch over the wire. There we go. Uh, let me just go back to no mod so we can compare that. I want to watch the rate. Oh, the rate of fire actually went up a lot from this extra energy. All right. And I'm, I'm loving the uh, the light, the actual lighting that is uh, that it's doing there. Uh, if we have a look at a penetration, I can't imagine this is going to really do anything. It gives us damage 36, weight 22. I think that's pretty much exactly the same. Didn't expect much from that. Uh, lots of different shots. Oh, oh, now this is a potential. Let's have a look at what kind of damage you're doing there. We're up in the 30,000s with this, despite the significantly lower. Uh, firing rate. That is a strong contender. What kind of damage are we doing with this? Mm. Okay, well, on they're perfectly accurate, so it's not a swarm weapon. It doesn't splash. It's 4,400, so uh, as much as this is very visually appealing, I don't see much reason to go for it, other than the fact that it's actually doing decent damage for a much lower energy cost. A significantly lower energy cost. Hmm. Okay, well, uh, there might be a contender. Slow, I wonder if slow actually does anything. Uh, let's slide you in there. I mean, it's perfectly accurate, so it's going to slow the thing it's hitting. Fair enough. Uh, fire. Also not terrible. Uh, what was the damage on slow? Slow and fire do more or less the same damage until we drop it below 10... Uh, 10 armor then you'll see the the fire damage ticking up quite aggressively i mean that's an option again it's perfectly accurate and it's doing a, a, a sizable fire effect but I, I kind of feel like the high powered laser is the better one for fire if i'm perfectly honest uh let's look at shard will shard do anything um wow potential damage just shot up oh wait 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 it's because the armor value is lower than it was no it's not Oh, potential damage. Right, I see, I see. So it's actually stripping huge amounts of armor off. That's for way less energy. Let's pop that back in. So this is... Hmm. No, no, there we are. So 4,400. And if we go back to Shard... This is pushing well past... Okay, well, I'm not quite sure why. And maybe, maybe there's a bunch of... It's imperceptible, but a bunch of little Shards down here. Uh, let's switch over to... Oh, wait, what was that? Did I see something? I... I absolutely did. Wait a second. Huh. Why... Is it when it's missing? 
A perfectly accurate weapon which does more damage when it misses. I am confused. Dot com right now. Um, is it perhaps to do with armor? Not that I can tell. Let's push armor all the way up. I really don't know what's going on with this. But no matter how you slice it, shards are significantly better by the looks of it. Uh, finally, let's check out critical. 42 damage. But it's dropping. No, shards just straight up do more damage. I'm not clear on why. Wait, let me let me just test something. If we have no mod and we move this around. Hmm. Okay, no, it is it there there are shards, it's just not visible on Will this potentially arc between other enemies? I don't know, but I'm willing to find out, I suppose. Uh, Alright, well, this is definitely the way to go with it. Weight 20, that's actually very, very modest. I quite like that. Um, Energy is 44 with triple red line. That's fine, though. Uh, I think this might be an okay swarm weapon. I, I really can't tell right now. But we're gonna go ahead and grab it, and we're gonna pop that on to Mr. Green. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna need we're gonna need a Tesla-like uh, name for this. We can't have Mr. Green with a shard Tesla cannon, which may or may not arc between enemies. Hmm. We are gonna need some sort of lightning-themed themed uh, name for this one. I'm gonna leave that one to suggestions in the comments, I think. We've got an enormous amount of weight capacity though, and we've still got a lot of room for energy, uh, though that is going to go down significantly in just a moment. There we are. We're now pushing 50 out of the 71 energy, and uh, we haven't quite seen what its, uh, what its cooling is like. We might need the capacitor. I'm going to guess capacitor. But we also desperately need to increase its max temp outside. We're going to be aiming for something... We, yeah, two, two heat sinks I think is good. If we could make this a pure energy mech. Now, that means it's going to have a hard counter. Anything that's resistant to energy is going to be rough. And indeed... Is this really going to be that useful against the Operarius? Because they, so they are resistant to energy. This kind of sucks, really. Uh, but the weight is not a problem. And we are going to be bringing ammo on this mech no matter what. So it, it doesn't make sense not to use it. But if we could push maybe a rapid fire fire laser and a just a regular... A kinetic weapon or maybe even a cannon. I think there is a possibility for that. Right, I'm gonna go quickly set up some weapons. I will summarize what I do afterwards because you've seen me set these weapons up before. Okay, after much playing around, I think we have something that stabilizes just a few fractions of a percent away from overheat. Let's have a watch of this one now. Yeah, it's like 99.8 or somewhere around there that this uh, stabilizes with full firing. Okay, so the weapon system I went with in the end was a basic rotary cannon with slow. Uh, I have to have a capacitor. I have to have a battery. Now, I would love to get rid of that. And we might be able to do that once we have a better uh, uh, reactor for this. Right now, I have to have the battery just to be able to equip all of the weapons. Even trying to undervolt this, which would push us over the, th the thermal threshold, uh, can't be done unless I've got the battery there, unfortunately, because we could have replaced uh, another capacitor, which would have helped an awful lot, or an ammo module, which would have given us more firing time and less reload time, which, again, would have helped. Uh, but I think everything about this comes down to that capa the, uh, the reactor. Additionally, I had to forgo having a repair drone. I've also had to forgo having a shield. So this is not a a mech for defense. This is a as close to a glass cannon mech as we've probably got right now. But still, I'm pretty happy with the overall uh, overall stat. So here's the shove stability regen and use weight very little. Additional speed very very little. Evasion chance is 17%, which is, you know it's not too bad as a base. Now I do need to still equip armor, but honestly, given the amount of extra weight we've got, we've got more than enough to do that. 
Uh, power wise, the max cooling is 4.65, the basic heat is 2.72, heat from reload is quite a whopping 6.55, heat from shot is 0 0.6 because we've got two fully red lined energy weapons here with external resistance of 0 0.65. This is a, uh, that's because of the heat sinks. This reactor ended up having to be a, uh, a, uh, focused on, ooh, let me just come off there, there we are, so I can pull this down. That's focused on internal resistance rather than external because we're using energy weapons and that makes a lot of sense for this. And let's pop that back in there, but overall I'm fairly happy with this. It's going to cost us 136 engineers to get out, but I think this mech is the prime candidate for the new reactor. Depending on its stats, we'll have to see what these new reactors can do. But this, this strongly, to me, is a, a strong co candidate for that. If I could get rid of this battery, then I could significantly improve its thermal performance, either with an extra capacitor to pull down the, the heat per shot, or, but ha like I said, having an ammo, uh, ammo module, or depending on, on how high the reactor's max temperature can be, because again, cooling gets better the, the higher up it goes. Uh, we might even be able to get away with something else entirely. Maybe we could even put uh, another drone on it. But I'm gonna stick with the armor module for now, just because we are actually fighting a lot of deserts and this seems to make sense. But that is the Mr. Green. Strongly welcome another name. Strongly welcome another name, but let's uh, not forget to fully max out the energy weapons. There we go. Right, let's see what kind of armor we have available to plonk in here. None of the good stuff, sadly, so it's going to be all of the the uh, highest armor, but also highest weight that we can put on this. And then the second best strike phase, so it's not even got that great of a passive armor. It makes me sad, but what it can do is max out the coating. There we go. I, if I'm feeling particularly generous, I will cut out that horrible sound. But uh, there we are, 100 layers of coating. Now that sounds great, but personally, I would prefer not to be reliant on... It's, it's again, RPG rules. I would rather have natural HP regen that will keep me alive through a fight rather than having a hundred healing pots because a hundred healing pots, while a lot, still is a finite amount. But there we go. I think that is going to be everything for the Mr. Green. Let's get you deployed. There we are. Okay, now, the reason why I brought the Shellcracker and the Mr. Brown in is Grid Monkey, with a zero, was concerned that I'd mistakenly set up the Shellcracker's missile ranges. So, let's just have a quick look at this. Now, this is going to cost me some engineers to do, but I don't mind. This is a this is a reasonable thing to be worried about. So, minimum range on all enemies there, correctly set. The Operarius, much closer though, but all other creatures have infinite range. So, basically, the Shellcracker's... Um, shard rocket system will only engage Operarius when they get close. Well, close-ish. But it will happily engage um, other enemies at extreme distances. Uh, infinite distances for all intents and purposes. I'm, I'm assuming this is basically infinite and is, is effectively saying, yeah, you can shoot at it as long as you can see it on the map. So that weapon is fine. It's doing exactly what we want. I do appreciate that sometimes looking at these, it can be a little bit uh, easy to miss what they're saying. Uh, again, with the uh, missile launcher, Operarius. Oh, you're. Oh, no, no, no. I have actually. You can't see it for some reason, but I have said that the minimum rage to engage is off the screen. But you know what? Maybe that is. Maybe that isn't at all for it. Maybe I should just say minimum range to engage is somewhere. It isn't getting a lot of use, and I kind of would like it to get a bit more use. Um, oh, that actually does remind me, though, there was, was one other bit of advice that uh, was offered regarding the, uh, the rocket launcher system, and I should address that now while we're here. Let's uh, get you in there. There we go. And this was from... Uh, Nodia, who opined that one or two points of accuracy in a rocket that versus the missile. The missile has accuracy, and I think this rocket has accuracy as well. No, it doesn't. Uh, okay, so we can adjust that. But they opined that having a, a little bit, like one or two pips into uh, accuracy, can be a lifesaver. Uh, as they can fire so wildly off course initially, the even a single point will dramatically reduce the likelihood of them firing straight into the wall that's next to them. I've even seen some people commenting that somehow the mechs managed to shoot the walls behind them. 
Now, I obviously haven't seen what they're talking about, and there's that part of me is like, are you sure you didn't have your mouse next to your mech? And so your because if you if you've noticed when the mouse is close to a mech in the uh, strategic game, uh, sorry, in the tactical game, they will turn to face it. And I'm wondering if maybe an enemy came into range while it was facing the other way because it was trying to look at the mouse and it shot before it had fully turned around to aim at the enemy. But at the same time, I, you know what? I could believe it, given how inaccurate these weapon launches seem to be. Uh, you know, I, sure, we'll, we'll go with that. Until proven otherwise, I'm going to take your face value. And yes, the mechs have apparently shot the backwards. They farted a, a rocket out and struck a wall that they were stood next to. I could believe it. I could believe it. So you know what? Let's uh, let's pop two points of accuracy into the missile launcher system. We lose a little tiny bit of power, but we gain a little bit of peace of mind. And, and you know what? That's worth it. Uh, I am have, going to have to undervolt these systems though. At least one. No, actually, I'm going to have to undervolt both of them to get this to work. That's okay. Uh, what is your passive armor again? Your passive armor is amazing, actually. Um, Sure. Let's go ahead and deploy you. That will do quite nicely. And we'll do exactly the same thing for Mr. Brown. Just to double check. Always wise to double check. I never mind checking. So thank you very much, everyone, who takes the time to point these things out. Now, I'm going to pull mm, one point from rate of fire, one point from damage. That will improve our thermal performance just that little bit as well. Right, so this is the minimum engagement range there, but for Operarius, are we engaged? Yeah, again, with Operarius, we are saying, hey, don't use your rockets on Operarius unless you have to, unless they're the, literally bearing down upon you and they're the best thing to shoot for. But everything else should shoot far away. Okay, there we go. That should do for all of the tweaking that we need to do for today. I did set up a second weapon just in case we, we need to. So if for some reason we decided, yeah, sure, we can absolutely take out Mr. Green to a volcano, I have made a secondary weapon system for it. Uh, this one is... And I was really tempted to just take this one out as is, but slow is so, so good utility. But it is a cannon shotgun. I'm sure we'll find a mech at some point to put this on. This was my backup plan if I couldn't get the thermals to work for Mr. Green, but we did in the end just. So uh, we're going with the slow for now, but this is this is the uh, the plan B, and that is to have a 120 millimeter tank shotgun. And it was almost worth it just for the means. I'm gonna, gonna be honest, the, the mean value alone was pretty high. But with that done, oh man, you really stand out without any paint now, don't you? Oh, I'm so sorry, but uh, it is time for us to go ahead and jump into a mission. Now, which one were we going to? We weren't going to, f to go for the volcano. That's the one we weren't going to go for. Uh, but also, we could take this one on. It's only five nests, so I'm, I'm pretty happy taking a, uh, a spear out to this one. So give me a few seconds to prepare our mech pilots. Okay, everyone say hello to Tubman, and though, though you can't see them, in fact, I'll just quickly show you. We've also got Clone 1 renamed as Caligal. It's time for us to start taking them out. If we don't, they're never going to catch up in levels, and they're closer to new traits than pretty much any of our other pilots, except perhaps for Isham and Regery. Uh, actually, no, Isham and Regery are fairly low. Biclo is probably the closest. Uh, no, no, Biclo and Isham. Yeah, I was correct to pick out Isham initially, but they, they're fairly uh, close to their next level up, which will bring them one level away from getting some uh, new traits, which is going to be quite important. But let's head out for the first mission of the day. We're going to go and we're going to clear this uh, the nest opening over here. There's only five uh, five nests and three brookers, so this is going to be a fairly easy one. But it occurred to me that yes, I can absolutely send out. I don't need to even send out a, a uh, underpowered lance. I don't need to send out a spear. We can instead send out our group. Now this actually uh, ties us into something interesting that was said by. Uh, now I can only assume that you haven't set up your YouTube username, but on the off chance that you did, and you expressly wanted to be known as user RM eight K H two P H five M. I almost feel like I should have said that in a Picard accent and then fo followed it up with lock at the end. Uh, they're concerned that the targeting AI causes the mech to lock onto the closest viable target, then wait until it can fire on it. 
which in the case of our missile is never with when it comes to operarius or it ne it was never before and that's one of the reasons why i change it a little bit um once locked it would not reassign a target until the current one is destroyed or moves out of line of sight which could be a while if it locked it at its max range so that's why we've now allowed for operarius to be engaged uh, a little bit so in hopes that that's going to help uh, another point that was made uh was in regards to uh engaging uh with brucus as a target for our very long range weapon systems that means that that the brucus might end up being just clipped enough to make them run away long before we're actually in a position where we want to take them on and i agree I agree. I still think uh, Mini Mogul, who's going to be taking out the Mr. Green uh, for this one, you're going to focus on nests wherever possible. But following on from that, we are then going to have... Actually, maybe you should... Uh, no, no, you should definitely be looking at the uh, Ares, uh, simply because the Ares are I, I, a difficult enemy for us to take out, and I would like to prioritize removing them, if at all possible. Let's have... You know what? We'll just... We'll just manually focus on the nests for now there is a part of me that want me uh, mr pink maybe mr pink can focus on these i'm not going to do a huge amount of damage but you do have a, a, a shard weapon i believe it is let me just double check that yeah it is a shard weapon so you'll do appreciable amounts of damage to an unarmored opponent which is what the uh the ovums always are and finally we're bringing out the dig rig as well good old dig rig right let's get into the mission and see how this all goes for us Right, this is going to be the first mission for Tubman here. Uh, let's go ahead and cycle to a nice camera mode. Got one nest there. Two, three, four, five. Okay. Oh, that's actually quite nice. We don't even have anything over there that we're going to have to struggle to try and get to. Obviously, we're not going to be running this nest. We're here specifically to eliminate the uh, target above ground. Oh, God. Don't, don't fire too close to that. Okay. How about you, three, go that way. You, hold position. There we go. That's a lot better for us. Right, now you can start approaching. Nice kill already. Very nice kill. Oh, oh, we are definitely seeing this Tesla arcing. I don't know what controls when it does, but I'm loving that it is. So this is a potential swarm removing weapon. All right, I'm down for that. Uh, I really would like this Brucus eliminated, though, if you c Oh, God, those uh, Operarius have just been blown straight into us right there. Let's uh, continue moving down. It's currently not too much of an issue for... Oh, good, there we go. The Ares did ram us there, which is uh, kind of annoying. But uh, we are being blown all over the place, aren't we? Yeah, let's uh, not get too aggressive. I chased down the Brucus there, and that was my fault. I got greedy. Greed caused our mechs to get a little bit more damage than they should have had otherwise. But we should be able to uh, pop these nests relatively easily at this point. Unfortunately, we should have done it from that side so that we weren't at risk. I've mentioned it before, but it, the wind, as far as I've seen, is only blowing from one direction. And uh, we don't want to be where the wind is blowing at, because that is how we get caught by... Oh, okay, let's uh, please come back options. No, no, I'm giving you orders. Don't be... Yeah, okay, that's fine. You know what? You're okay there, Mini Mogul. You're probably completely safe, actually. You know what? Let's have you not be right next to where those shots are being fired. Also, <laughs> this is just sending those shots every which way. Uh, I would like you to head up that way, and you two can just pop over there. There we go. Move around. Let's continue using those rockets where you're able to Wow, Mini Mogul, I'm fairly certain you've been able to do this mission by yourself. That is the difference of having a, uh, a particularly strong lance, I guess. Uh, th yeah, no, at this point, th are we going to get to the point where we're actually uh, fielding points? And it's so funny because someone actually mentioned in the comments, I, I, I didn't think I was going to have a reason to bring it up, but it was just a, a cool bit of battle tech lore that, uh, again, the, the clan, um, they don't field four mech lances, they field... Uh, five mech stars. But uh, a very interesting point is they said, well, the clan also have a word for a single mech, and that is the point. And it, it works so well. Like, it, you could have gone in so many different directions, like dagger and stuff like that. But point it, it, it encapsulates it all. 
A two one could uh, a two mech lance could be oh well a two mech group could be a dagger if you wanted but a point that just gets the the point across I suppose I I quite liked it it was, it was wonderful I, and we might actually be staring at a potential for setting that up moving forward right okay we've done everything we wanted to do so time now for you to retreat, retreat. go ahead and get out of here please and that is progressing quite nicely okay I'm very interested to see Mr Green's average temperature during that mission that is a big one for me now it looks like no one got any uh any experience for running that Ooh, that's that is a point against i'm going to be honest but you're going to get a medal for not having the mr green overheat that is quite impressive but yeah the lack of experience for running those missions that's kind of sucky uh but let's have a look wow the average reactor temperature is only 0.54 I am very impressed. Very impressed, actually. It was... It had less temperature than Mr. Pink did. Okay. I'm quite impressed. Well done indeed. Brought back more than enough to cover the deployment. Okay. Uh, so, what remains now? We can remove that and we can now see those... Cells. I honestly really like that. And it's probably going to be something that I'm going to actively do. We're going to actively hit the uh, the nest locations just to get it so that I can remove the, the, the bold exclamation mark. That seems to make a lot of sense to me. Now, it is going to be necessary. Unfortunately, we can't strike this one. Hmm. Now, it should be within range. Is it maybe because I've not successfully run a mission on... Ah, that could be it. Well, that's a bit of a bummer. Uh, my intent was to try and run this mission and then run this one before we left. I suppose we could spend a few turns here. I don't really want to, though, and I don't want to move away from this one, but it seems like that might be a necessity. I could perhaps spend a turn and just not move. That would allow me to run... Uh, this mission this turn, and then two missions next turn, and then perhaps that would give me this this tile. So we'd effectively choose to stand still for a few missions. It's not ideal. Certainly not. Though it might... No. If we want to hit this one, then this is the only tile that's going to allow me to do that. Um, that being said, you know what? We could nuke this tile. I'm still going to need to... to if if my, uh, my understanding is correct, and I can only... Uh, see, uh, enter a mission on a tile adjacent to one I have succeeded running a mission on, then I still need to get down here. But if I nuke this tile, at least I can move in that direction. That would work for me. And we could start clearing out some more nests and such uh, along the way. All right, well, uh, we know what we're going to be doing down here. So uh, oh, we've got a little bit of a repair cost. That's perfectly fine. I don't mind that one. I'm going to get the pilot set up, and I will bring it back when we're about to hit the next mission. Okay, here we go. Here's our lance for the next mission. Now, this one's got a lot of nests, and I'm kind of tempted to have Shepard focus on that, but it means no one's going to focus on Operarius. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to hope that maybe that'll be okay. Um, Operarius don't have enough armor to deal with fire, so even though this is an energy weapon, and it would possibly be better used against Ares... I'm going to say use the fire on the Operarius. This is still actually completely capable of clearing large swaths of Operarius with fire damage alone. But Frostfire in there. Uh, Piccolo is going to be in the Shepherd targeting Ness. Caligal is going to be uh, our newest recruit, going to be using the Marshmallow. And Synthetic Samurai is going to be focusing on Ares as well in the Mr. Brown. Okay, the uh, cost to deploy, 181 Bjorn, 133 Skalknit, and we've only got three Brukas to collect all of that uh, those resources back. Shouldn't be too much of a problem, though. Right, okay. Let's have a quick gander. Uh, got a lot of nests around here. Ultimately, we only need to kill the Columbra and the... Uh, the uh, Brucus, but honestly, based on the, the on this map, we're going to end up clearing it. The only ones we might not clear is, is if we just ignored these and just went down. Cleared. We're going to have to clear all of these just because of how close they are to the to the Columbra, um, and this one as well. But 
it makes sense that if we're going to be going to be uh, clearing anyway, rather than being attacked from multiple sides, we should just clear this and just move down, sweep downwards, killing the nest as we approach the the bottom, just to try and reduce the amount that we're dealing with. I do have artillery as a backup if we need it. Right, let's get over here, try and stay on the side, which is not going to be constantly having uh, Operarius and indeed Ares thrown at us without end. Let's just pop these as quickly as you can. That's an amazing attack there. Keep it up, keep it up. There we go, remove that problem. Now scooch down a little bit. The uh, Brucus are targets of opportunity for us right now. Ooh, that, that is a, a slow move there. Let's get down here. Focus on the enemies. Okay, they've deployed their, their turrets. Not great. We've already melted one of them, though. Wow. Okay. Uh, I do want it destroyed at this point, though. There we go. Nice work. Very nice work. Let's uh, scooch up. Make sure that that Brucus is gone. Very well done. And uh, now we just try and clean up the Operarius coming our way. Oh, that was an Ares. Just got, went straight into us. Unfortunate, but all right. Uh, we're going to deal with an artillery barrage. Oh, and a tornado. Because, you know, not, not already dealing with enough. Uh, but that's fine. The uh, fire laser is doing fine with getting rid of the Operarius. And, and that's true for both the frost fire and the marshmallow right now. I got one more Brucus down hither. Would love to clear you out, though, before we continue pushing down, but we've got a lot of nests down here. It makes sense to try and clear those out. Having only one nest that we have to worry about from a direction we're not uh, not specifically facing is a lot easier than having four or five of them trying to flank us at the same time. My god, though, that is just annoying. Uh, let's continue moving down. Again, I will say that as much as Heat is probably, you know, on paper, genuinely the worst enemy in the game, Wind feels like the worst. It is more annoying. Heat is more dangerous, but wind is far more annoying. And uh, I definitely feel the annoyance of the wind more than the danger of the heat most of the time. Uh, let's continue pushing forward. Oh, there's a lot of enemies coming our way. We're going to help out a little bit. There we are. Just remove them with an artillery. Thin them out at the very least. We are surrounded, so please just clear up the worst of it if you can. Where is that tornado to suck up all the operaries when we need it? My lord. Uh, Alright, keep going. I really want that nest removed if you can. Just focus fire on the nest for now. All damage in that direction. There we go. Just pop it. There we go. That job's done. Now avoid dealing with the Columbra's laser. That would just make this already a messy mission even worse. Uh, I mean... I'm going to be happy to not have to deal with the desert just because of the thermal issues, but my lord, the, the, the constant like desert storms, I'm going to be so happy to be away from those. I've had a lot of people saying that the water is death, but I mean, at the very least, it's not going to have wind. So, you know, that, that's, a, that's already a huge upgrade in my opinion. Uh, did we pop that tornado straight away? We did. Nice. Very nice. This would, of course, be a lot easier if I had mechs with significantly higher stability regeneration. And that's kind of on me that we don't. Uh, the other Brookers are just kind of living its best life over there, just, you know, chilling out. Uh, being on this side does run the risk of us getting pulled into the Columbra, uh, the Columbra's laser, and we are slow to recover stability to get out of the way of it, but we actually managed it. Not too bad. Not too bad. There's only one more nest here for us to deal with. And honestly, if we can just get in there and deal with the nest and the Columbra at the same time, that would be fine by me. Let's continue the push. Focus fire on the nest. Thank you. Now focus fire on the Columbra. Just pop it. There we go. No more no more artillery of Operarius, from what I can tell. Once you've popped the Columbra, that is it. You don't have to deal with it anymore. And there is no reason for us to uh, worry about collecting resources on this one because we can actually complete this mission, which is going to be quite nice. But yeah, the stability recovery, we can zoom right in. The stability recovery on our mechs is so slow after that big gust of wind there. But there we are. And you can now continue the mission. Well done. You can see the stability just drain. Getting some, uh, some of the evasion mods would be amazing. The little drone there doing a little bit more repairs. Very much approved. Very much approved, actually. Uh, was there actually much repairs needed? I'm not seeing anyone with any damage. Oh, actually, I think it does mention that the drone will always be active. So maybe that's what we were seeing there. 
Not liking the uh, the fact that Blicklow seemed to have taken a little bit of damage, though. But there we are. We paid for the deployment. Let's see. Average reactor temps. That's the main thing I worry about these days. The, the, the disobedience. <sighs> I've just learned to live with it, really. Uh, but Bicklow gained a level. Caligal's almost a level 2. Synthetic Samurai. Or oh, uh, you know, coming up towards level five, and Phoenix Elia got a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, uh, experience there as well. Not very much. I'm going to give Caligal a medal. Well done. You actually did quite well on that on that mission, I must say. Right. Okay. Let's check in on our pilots. And you know what? Something I, I keep forgetting to do, but I often want to. Uh, first and foremost, let's check who needs to go into the hospital, just so I don't uh, get sidetracked. Vitality and stress. I mean, Bicklow, you, you need the vitality, yes. And Encrypt after you. So uh, once you're done eating the Encrypt, no, no, you're not doing sports. You're doing a rest. Now, we want to see CBS. Sounds for you, CBS is the lowest now. Okay, in you go. But Tubman, let's have a look at you. Tubman, age zero, stasis one. Artificially grown human, no experience. 63% of long-term memory has been corrected as the brain grew. Sampled from the last brain scan of the original. 63% of long-term memory. Huh. Has been corrected? Corrected in what way? Oh, that's very interesting. Caligal? Yeah, 63% of long-term memory has been corrected as the brain grew. Hmm... I've got questions. I've got very big questions. Uh, all right. Well, we that's going to be a, an interesting one to see how that one continues to expand out. But uh, fair enough. Well done. I'm glad to have you with us. Uh, I'm wondering if there were... Was, we had another one, didn't we? We definitely had another, another clone. I just don't remember who it was now. Um... Or perhaps, perhaps I didn't. Perhaps oh, it might have been one of the characters over to the side there. Yeah, I think was it Encrypt? Who was the clone of? Oh no, Vanya lost one was the clone of Encrypt. No, sixty-three percent as well. I was wondering if maybe as the uh, as the characters uh, got more fighting down, this number would change. But it looks like that's just always going to be the case. Okay, well that's fine. We've we've uh, introduced ourselves to the clones. And uh, that, uh, I'm, I, I, honestly, that's given me more questions than I had before, frankly. I'm, I'm a little bit concerned. Right, well, let's have a look at what we can research now. We've got 127 scientists eager to, to uh, make their mark. Uh, we could go for railgun amps, electromagnetic. Uh, electromagnetic mass accelerator smaller version of old anti-asteroid rigs damage potential increases with power i think we're gonna go for this one another energy weapon though uh, railgun would ooh, would that be considered an energy weapon or a kinetic i think it would probably be considered a kinetic which is helped with energy i could only assume that to be the case i would have liked to have gone for this but that is a lot of days that is faster uh how many days have we got left five days there one day here, of course. So we're going to be able to do the uh, the research coming up. Now, we've got a bunch of engineers. Unfortunately, what we don't have is a bunch of motors. It was suggested that if I have spare engineers, why don't I just go ahead and get uh, get uh, swap out their, their motors? I would love to, but we don't have that av availability right now. Oh, I wonder. What would a size plus version of this be like? I'm super tempted to find out. Takes an enormous amount of energy, though. Whereas a size plus version of this it doesn't take nearly as much energy, but I think is probably going to be a bit more useful. It's a big question. The other one is obviously a cannon. That is definitely a, an option as well. Um, or a size plus large, uh, sorry, uh, uh, large laser. But that drains so much energy. I, it might be feasible with the new reactor, but I'm going to wait and find out about that one. How long do we need to make these? Only two days. You know what? Let's get another nuke on the go. Uh, that is going to free us up to use one of the nukes to clear the way forward. And I think that's going to be quite an important one for us to do. All right. Last thing then. Strategic movement. For now... Uh, yeah, it looks like that is going to, in fact, open things up for us down here. Okay, well, we're not going to uh, not going to push 
this one. This one has definitely got one somewhere in here. Uh, this None of these are really giving away any information for me. Uh, this one has to have one down here somewhere. This one, when it sees it, that's going to be the only one. So it, this three doesn't give me any new information. Nor does this one. Well, actually, no. That one can only see a single one. And it has to be the one here. Which means that... Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Is this one a nest, then? No, it couldn't be. This one can see two. So I'm thinking... No, it hasn't given me any new information. Th this, this does throw things in the air a little bit. Because I know there has to be a nest here. So I know there can't be a nest there. Because uh, this is going to isolate all of that. Which means there has to be a nest down here, then. I'm going to run with that assumption for now. We still don't have enough information to accurately tell where the nest is here, which is a bit of a shame, but we can run a mission down here and that might give us enough additional information next turn. But we're going to just sit still for this one and see how things go. Time for us to uh, click to the next day. Uh, we're going to get the new reactor and I'm extremely excited about that. There is a strong possibility that we're not going to run very many missions tomorrow because I'm going to be playing around with this so much, but we'll see. Uh, into We actually helped a lot of wounded humans that time. Efficiency has gone up a little bit. Uh, we did lose out on Metalite and Unilon. I actually didn't check the uh, repair prices. That's bad of me. But uh, consumer goods is okay. Food supply is okay. We're actually gaining food supply. What I want to see is gaining consumer goods and food supply, and then I know we are absolutely uh, fixed with that. But okay, that, that was a good amount of wounded humans healed. Uh, very happy with that one, actually. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to get a lot of different tech unlocked, including a nuke. And the day after, we're going to finish researching the uh, the new mech, which is extremely exciting. Uh, it's increasingly looking a bit hairy come three weeks, but, uh, well, it is what it is. But we are going to continue with the the uh, work on the medical facilities. We're going to finish this one off. This is going to push wounded humans and life support up even further, components even further, city damage even further. Let's go ahead and nail that one down. And from this point onwards, we are going to work on the lower med... Uh, sorry, medical compartment two. And... If all things pan out, I mean, if we're stripping down, like, over 100 humans a day, I mean, it still means we're going to be, like, day 50, but, um, or, or around there before we've completely healed everyone, but I'm not, I'm not, uh, dissatisfied with that, I must confess. All right, let's have a look at our available missions for today, then. Uh, we're obviously not going to run these ones. Uh, interesting. Very interesting. They appear to have completely recovered. Oh, do you have to keep clearing them? Once you've actually done that, uh, do you have to uh, pretty much designate a single mech to go out there every day in order to keep them from, uh, from filling back up? That's very interesting. That is extremely interesting. Uh, we're not going to run there, obviously. Ooh, don't like you, launches rockets. Oh, no. Okay, so it looks like we are we are dealing with a a Millis bloom. Everywhere seems to have Millis right now, and this one just looks unfavorable for us. We could run over there, I guess. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tangle with with Millis. Maybe we could. Well, no, it wouldn't give us any more information. That's the problem there. We could perhaps deal with the Millis. But I'm I'm favoring not having to deal with them yet because I'd have to rejig all of our mechs to have uh, the the anti uh, anti uh, rocket. So for now, I think today is just actually going to be a fairly boring one. We're just going to deal with this. I may nuke this tile though and move that way. At least that way we would still have access to all of these missions to run. On the following day, and maybe the Millis will, will uh, the Millis Bloom will be dealt with by then. Either way, this is going to be the one we hit. But let's go ahead and jump into the Mech Editor and see what we can do.
Uh, we're going to have to bring back one of the mechs, actually. Uh, Mr. Green, like I said, prime candidate for a stronger reactor. But let's have a look at this stronger reactor. Now then. Uh, weight 80. That's a hell of a thing. These only... That's 20 more. Oof. Okay. Energy output base is 40, which is already better. Uh, maximum temperature, 1,800. Comparing those. That's almost 10 times the max temperature and 10 times the base output. Uh, is there a difference in cooling power at all? Yeah, 10. Okay, so it's, it's more or less just 10 times better. We've got a load of stuff going on here. Uh, reaction 0 0.6, multiplier 2.75. Slow down multiplier 0 0.5. Okay, okay, okay. It looks like we're, these are the kernel and this is the safety. Slow down multiplier. Th okay, well, it doesn't look like there's any difference there. Uh, orcs. Much the same, it seems. External resistance, inner resistance, resistant multiply, and overcharges. Overcharges might be significantly more interesting, but we've got all of this down here. R, R multi, uh, S, S multi. I would say that's reaction and slow down. Yeah, no, S multi is already up. So we've got slow down, reaction. Uh, okay, so we are going to have to balance the reactor then between giving energy and also not overheating. I'm just going to take a guess. I do believe that it's actually talked about a little bit in here, though. So give me just a second to read through the information. It'll be on screen for you, though, if you want to pause and read it yourself. Okay, then. I have been playing around with different designs and learning. Uh, obviously, if you've read the uh, reactor cons uh, part here, it more or less did what I what I suspected, given that one of the control rods, the, the more silvery grey, is all about the reaction and multiplying the force of the reaction. The dull grey is all about the slowdown multiplier, but doesn't add slowdown itself, interestingly, and that's, a, that's quite an important one. Whereas the uh, the reaction, uh, sorry, the red rod here adds both reaction but less is or just a little bit over half as much raw reaction, but significantly more reaction multiplier, but also has a reaction multiplier, half as much of a reaction. Uh, sorry, yeah, slow down multiplier. I, I do apologize for the misspeaking there, but half as much slow down multiplier as the gray rods. The, these dull gray rods seem they're purely to to improve the system's ability to to uh, cool down and and keep it from overheating the the uh, silvery gray ones are all about just getting power and the red ones kind of toe the line they, they do multi-function now from what I've I did with the experimentation I found a few things one I'm p fairly certain you could build a reactor out of this that would give more power than the basic ICE reactor but not by a lot maybe like twice as much power somewhere around there that I'm not even sure you'd be able to to overheat like I don't think it would be possible to overheat this thing and that was created with a very large focus on these if we pop that one in there now about 77 power out of it the slowdown is five but the slowdown multiplier is three from this uh, it looks like the slowdown multiplier there is actually the slowdown that we're getting here and then this multiplies it by three um but if we run this reactor and i love the sound i love the look of it the cooling is five points higher than the reactor's core temperature like running by itself Without external heat, this reactor will never overheat, and you can easily make it resistant to external and internal heating. I'm fairly certain that you would have to go out of your way to force this reactor to overheat. This one is possibly a volcano reactor. Uh, we'll have to remember that one for the future. Not a lot of power, though, but with batteries and stuff like that, we'd be able to play around with it. Let's turn that down. Now, if we just swap one of these out, then we get 144 power output. Uh, some decent stats over here, if we uh, spool this one up again. The uh, the power, sorry, the, the internal heating is just over the uh, base cooling, and if we just push the reactor a little bit, we, we'll more or less sit at 50% reactor temperature just from normal operation. Uh, around about there. Well, actually, no, it'll probably pull back a little bit as well. Now, you can go a little bit better, though, if we turn this off and we balance the red and the silver control rods. We'll eke out just a tiny little bit more power. If we pop that back again, it's 144 to 147. If we run this one, again, the difference is only a little bit. This is like 0.3 hotter now so if we just push those three again we're, we're still over it so it's going to balance out about about 50 percent i would say but what i would love to 
I shouldn't say this, uh, but I am an A. I'm not. I don't. I've got radiation shielding. This is being done in a controlled environment. No citizens were hurt. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. Now, if we really push this, now even that is actually uh, fairly solid if we uh, run this one, but uh, I have far less of the red rods than I have of the others, it seems. But this one is already, it's stable more or less as it is right now. So you could run this as it is, and, and it's probably not as as resistant to overheating, but this is a good good sort of middle ground if you don't want to have to worry about overheating too much. This is this has got 135 at 0% reactor temperature. This this can cool itself perfectly, and that's fine. However, if we were to, fa for example, just do this, I don't know, we've now got 364. <laughs> if we were to do, I don't know, this, we've now got 1,107 energy output. Let's just see how far we can push this thing. 2,000. <laughs> oh, it's marvelous. Uh, 3,000. Let's just do all silver. Let's, look, it's fine. I want to bring a portable star to my an infinite energy output. <laughs> Let's just turn it on for a second. And pop. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. It's, it's fine. The radiation will eventually be flushed from the lab and the humans can come back in. It is okay. Uh, Big Brother AI loves you and would only do things for your betterment, never for your harm. All right, let's go ahead and uh, rejig this. I'm not into, well, 424. I'm gonna say that this is definitely not viable though. It's gonna instantly overheat. Yeah, it's the 34 versus the 15 internal cooling. Not happening. Not unless there are some, oh, oops. Not unless there are some, uh, AIs don't make mistakes. That was for demonstration purposes only. Uh, but I think 144 is fine. This would give us enough control rods that I would be able to set up another reactor like this. Uh, actually, do we have... Oh, maybe. Maybe we could. Let's put it... Well, I guess we could put it up to 147. It's not that much of a difference, though, and, and I'm already concerned about overheating. So this is the reactor that we're going to go with. I enjoy playing around with this a lot. I really like the, uh, the, the puzzle aspect of getting this reactor, reactor done. But there we are. We have a functioning reactor. The, the first reactor that I feel comfortable calling a reactor. Let's pop you in there. Now, actually, before we do that, let's just have a look at the, the heat stats. So basic heat is 2.72. Max cooling is 4.65. Heat from shot, etc., etc. Now, we've got a much higher top threshold, but uh, we are... Max cooling is now 18.95. Basic heat is 15.68. Heat from reload. Heat from shot is actually a is that lower 0 0.32 was that what it was before i i may have missed that a 0 0.34 hmm, interesting it seems this reactor's internal cooling is just better anyway okay well i'm all right with that and the max outside temperature is now 578 this could absolutely just walk into a vault you know what never mind we didn't need all of that that trouble before having all of that extra power also not needed my god this is glorious. Also, we can pop this in there, too. Pop. Okay, so uh, Mr. Green is getting a big upgrade. This is still comfortable range for a volcano, in my opinion. But now we have some options for other things. Uh, one of them is we could add in extra cooling for our energy weapons, which might be a really good play if we end up getting... If the railgun is, as I suspect, a kinetic weapon that is just powered by energy or, or increased by energy then we almost certainly want to set that up and i think it would be wonderful uh but we could now well we actually we could put a c ram on it how good are these is the question how effective are the c rams is there a way for me to test i don't think there is a way for me to test that honestly um but we can at the very least have a drone on here but um could we is there anything we would be able to do with that Hmm. I'm not at all certain about this one. Uh, heat from shot... That, that's gone up. Was this affecting it? No. Hmm. Curious. Uh, the battery shouldn't have been affecting it. I am perhaps a little bit confused. That feels that that's gone up, not down, but all right. Uh, I'm going to do some thermal testing with this and just see where it sits presently. But we've got a lot of extra power, so there's no reason not to turn on an energy shield. And I strongly suspect this is going to be one of the strongest energy shields we've got. Uh, did we get any more 
Um, armor, though, is another question. I, I fail to remember. Uh, doesn't look like we did build any more armor. That's a shame. Oh, well. we'll just pop all of this back on there, then. That's fine. Uh, right, I'm going to do some thermal testing. Honestly, with the amount of weight... We oh, I can't. <laughs> it doesn't have arms. It can't have melee weapons. But uh, I shall bring you back with the report. Give me just a moment. Okay, suffice it to say, this, this mech can very comfortably handle the worst that desert is able to throw at it. And with the addition of a single more heatsink, it can handle volcano temperatures. I'm completely happy with this one. It is perfect for what it's doing. Now, with that all said and done, uh, we could keep the... Uh, honestly, just taking one of these off and putting that on just makes it volcano-proof. And I can't see what else the game is going to be able to throw at us, unless there are thermal-specific enemies. Now, weight-wise, we are still well underweight, so it's just armor that we would want to add on to this or perhaps even a, a, a weightier cockpit if we can get a better one the reload stats are pretty solid at this point i could conceivably switch this out to have rockets instead of a slow chain gun because this is already good enough at dealing with swarms rockets would give this armor cracking power at range and i kind of feel that so let's go ahead and grab that. I don't want all energy because that makes it that makes it uh, vulnerable to specific types of situations. So I'd prefer to avoid that one for now. But let's go ahead and set up a, a weighty rocket system. There is no reason to do anything, but we'll invest everything into rate of fire accuracy. There we go. Let's set this up, and I don't even really mind if this engages at close range with Operarius, frankly. Uh, but let's go ahead and grab... Sure, let's go for shell cracking. We'll have the shards. That works out. I will give a little bit of a min distance just to make sure that we aren't at risk of hitting our allies, but I think this is going to be a perfectly serviceable weapon. There we go. Let's pop this into Mr. Green. Mr. Green just became, by far and away, the strongest mech in our in the uh, in the lance that we have right now bringing this up a little bit closer so we're going to slow down just a slightly in fact actually it's still one of the fastest mechs because it's got so much extra um weight capacity probably one of the the better defended except for the armor we can improve that a little bit but uh, that is about the only thing we can do to improve this 64 engineers very well spent in my opinion although actually i just changed the weapon let's not let hubris play a part in this let me quickly test it Okay, the current configuration can comfortably handle 200 or just shy of 200 degree temperatures. It never crests above 91% despite having run this for quite some time. So, Mr. Green is complete. Instead of a kinetic system, it's currently got a rocket system, uh, which I'm more than happy to have for now. Though, there is the possibility that later on we would maybe want to do CRAM or something like that, in which case we would want to switch this back over to kinetics, which might be the case anyway once we've got rail guns. But uh, there we go. Let's go ahead and deploy you back out there that is absolutely fantastic though looking at the time i've spent an enormous amount of time in uh, in tweaking weapons and such so i don't actually know how long this episode has been so give me just a moment to check Okay, looking at the time, we are already over time, but I refuse to end the, the episode without us doing a final date. Hopefully everyone can forgive me for the longer episode this time, because we had two brand new toys to play with, and one of them, you don't even want to know how long I, I spent tootling around with that reactor. And the worst part is, it wasn't even that I just didn't understand it, I was just having too much fun, and I forgot that time was passing so quickly. Nevertheless, as I was setting up the pilots here, I actually noticed that we've got uh, another clone. Well done. Uh, actually, we should check. Uh, 63. Uh, will that ever change? I kind of hope it does, honestly. Uh, actually, uh, mech experience, 285. Hmm. Maybe that number is the one that's that's changing. Either way, we have our uh, setup here. Tubman and Caligal are coming out in Mr. Pink and Mr. Brown. And I'm kind of liking the idea of those being the newbie mechs. Uh, those are for our fresh recruits uh, as we uh, progress forward. But we've got a full, full complement of mechs 
for this mission. We're going to be taking on this one over here. Unfortunately, just everything else is too much of an unknown, and as much as I'm starting to feel that our group is, is powerful, that's, the, that's what gets you. It's when you start thinking that you're safe, that you make silly mistakes. We've got five nests, three brookers. It was really tempting to try these on because they've got four brookers, but there's eight nests, and eight of those nests could be producing things that can shoot us from extreme distances, and I would really like to have defensive mechs that have got CRAM before we start playing around with that. So we might have to look at the dig rig and see if we can uh, rejig it, maybe with a new reactor. We're up to seven uh, mortar shells, which is actually quite nice. Uh, we're only going to be dealing with Ares and Operarius here, so it's nothing too terribly dangerous, but uh, let's go ahead and make sure that uh, the peeps with the energy weapons, that is... Ooh, who's going to be leading the charge here? Um... Well, we're not going to be dealing with as much wind here. I think it's just going to be a tornado every now and then. So we don't actually need the move speed as much. So Frostfire with Phoenix Halea in commander role. Mr. Green, Mini Murgle, is going to be dealing with an Ares as well. I would like the... Yeah, let's try and set up two people to go for the Ovums. I would like that to be Mr. Brown over here. And Soundsphere, who's in the Shepherd. That will work out quite well for us. And then we want a couple more people targeting the uh, Ares. That will be Shellcracker and Marshmallow with the final two. Tubman in Mr. Pink and Encrypt in Digrig are going to be taking on the Operarius. This is the most expensive lance that we have fielded. And I don't actually expect to come out of this with, uh, with earning... Uh, or rather breaking even, but still I want to see how easy this goes now This shouldn't be too difficult of a, of a mission We've fought these sorts of missions with far less people before but what I really really wanted to do was check out how cool the, uh, the Mr. Green is gonna be so uh, Mr. Green's got a significant amount of backup here uh, We've got the Brucus over there one two three nests, which means the other two are down around here uh, One is right there. Where's the other one? So that's one Oh, right over there. Okay, past the past the tornado. All right, well, let's uh, move down here. We should be able to pop that stupidly fast. Well done. Let's uh, move on through. I would like to destroy... Wow. Okay, that's actually kind of amazing. Could you move on? There we go. Already removing these enemies at extreme range. I am deeply, deeply satisfied with this. Very happy with what we're seeing. There we go, another Brucus down, again at extreme ranges. Let's get in there, let's try not to spread out too much. We've got the uh, Shellcracker with us, and the Shellcracker needs everyone to be together. Otherwise, mistakes start happening and mechs start exploding. Uh, let's move up. I'm giving probably two, two distant move orders, if I'm perfectly honest. Uh, we need to try and get into position where we can take on that Brucus before it gets away. But the Shellcracker and Mr. Brown should be uh, more than capable of dealing with these at extreme range. There we go. New target there. Please annihilate it. Well done. And as soon as you're able, I want that one to be the new target. There we go. All of the rockets. All of the... T oh, that is perfect. Well, well done. And I'm actually kind of impressed with the, uh, the rapidity with which they removed the turrets as well. That's actually very, very nice. Okay, we're, you know what? We're going to clear up this this level. Let's remove all of the Operarius. Right, for now, I'm going to give you a short move order. Let's just continue to push forward. We've only got one more up above. The temptation to poke my head into the nest and see what it's like is exceptionally high, like painfully high. But, once again, it... As with these sorts of games, the thing that kills me is is not something that is inherently dangerous. It's me. It's me thinking that that I'm safe. The moment I start thinking, oh no, this is great. We're 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 absolutely mopping the floor. That's when you become complacent, and complacency is how you die. It's how I always lose in XCOM. It's like, aha, oh, I've killed all of the enemies. Now I just need to go and just, just uh, pass a turn because I've done everything. Pass the turn, uh, the, uh, suddenly an uh, alien grenade pops out of nowhere and kills half my squad. Everything else was fine. If I just continued to be sensible about the way I was playing, Everything would have continued to be fine, but no, I decided that everything was okay long before it was. Rant over, I'm sure every like XCOM player, especially like OG XCOM players, have experienced that, where you think the mission is completed long before it is, and you're just impatient, and that gets everyone dead. Right, uh, we don't actually want to enter the, the map, let me uh, avoid that one. Let's activate retreat. 
and go ahead everyone get out of there we are good to go that was perfectly done again do not expect to break even on this one but that was the objective it was to see how well we could clear up a map now it's not a perfect demonstration because we wouldn't have to fight winds the whole time and as i've said winds are the main enemy but let's see if we took any damage through that uh we no we oh actually did we we may have broken even just i think the scanner lit was the the 250 one i could be wrong about that uh, i'll have to double check but either way uh mini Mergle, you're gonna get another medal for piloting the first mech with a uh, an actual nuclear reactor as its power source well done you uh total time for disobeying orders zero because you are a good soldier everyone else though scallywags but that was uh, that was fairly good. Let's have a quick look. Tubman. Oh, of course, no. not going to get any experience out of this, which does kind of suck, but there we are. All uh, right, let's pass that through. There we go. Now let's get everyone back into the hospitals. We are actually getting to the point now where we've got enough other people that we're not bringing out that if our mechs could field twice, we would potentially be able to send out full uh, three full lances. We're nowhere near enough to send out four, but oh wow, synthetic samurai. That's a uh, that that was a uh, that was uh, the the AI that isn't thinking and talking to you right right now gave that medal. That was the Tyler Durden AI. Uh, fair enough. Let's go ahead and see how we're doing with vitality. Biclo is always a bit rough, but stress is pretty good right now. But I do want you to get your vitality. Uh, likewise for Phoenix, let's get you in there. CBS cl Clone 3 needs that a lot. But I'm actually going to pop Tubman in there for now. Sorry, Clone 3. But uh, Tubman is going out on missions, and those stats were a little bit too low for my liking. Caligal, likewise, probably going to need need the bump there. Hmm, actually... No, Vitality is the main stat. I want Biclo's, uh, Biclo's health to come up a little bit there. Right, let's go ahead and check in on research. We've got 147 people. And we've got this. The thermonuclear reactor. Scaled down by several times, a plasma confinement device. Used to obtain energy from the creation of new elements. The most modern compact reactor. It was less common on Earth than on Mars. That... Sounds to me much lo more like a fusion reactor rather than a fission reactor. Whereas this feels very much like a fission reactor. Hmm. Interesting. 50! 20! Oh, man. That sucks. But I wanted enough that I'm going to give the all clear for that one. Alright. Uh, right. So, with that done, I think the next one is we're going to pop some staff on the... Uh, the motors here. That's going to be another six-day train. That kind of sucks, but it is what it is. And we can't get anything else done for now. How many days we got? Two days left on a new mech. Four days left on a completely new system on mechs. Uh, we've got 20 days on the new uh, fusion reactor. Six days on a new motor. And two days left on railgun amps. So we've actually got quite a lot of fun things coming up. Now, what are we going to do over here? I am so terribly tempted. It only takes three days. You are ki Oh, it takes five. Oh, damn it. Okay. Never mind. Uh, right. Well, in that case, considering how big of an improvement this is, we want one of these. So I'm only going to put things up here that only take one day to do. And that would be... Well, we probably don't even need any of these anymore. Uh, we've, we've probably completely exited the... Uh, the age of the ICE, and we're just going to be swapping things over. I really want more armor, though. But we'll have that in a day. We're going to fill out these two. Let's go ahead, pop those in. And we'll continually try to keep this going. I don't want both of my my uh, hangars to be occupied by a single... Uh, sorry, so by, effectively by two five-bay projects. So I will alternate the base so that we're always producing something else and sometimes that's going to mean that one of the the hangers is not going to be um feasible for a big project for a while but that's okay that that would be okay by me we could probably i would need to make another one of these but we can with the components we've got get three fusion uh, sorry uh, fission reactors up and running i think and that would be very very much 
with the time, in my opinion. Uh, we can probably do away with these at this point, I would say. Yeah, we are not going to use these, so I'm just going to dismantle most of those. I'll bring them down to two, just in case we need them. Um, but I very much doubt we do. I'll bring this down to six so I could fit out a full plate if I needed it. We absolutely don't need all of these, but I guess we're going to keep them for now. Right, well, that is all we need to do there. What remains now is strategic. We can't move. But hopefully, in the next episode, we'll be able to run missions down here. We only need to run a mission there so I can actually activate this area. But I, th I would like to start moving in this direction at this point. So I am going to drop a bomb. We are going to drop it right there, which means we do not want to walk into it. Apparently, there is a <laughs> there is an achievement for losing the game by nuking your own city. I love that that exists, and thank you very much to the very helpful commenter who let us know so that we wouldn't have to for science it ourselves. You can nuke your city. I, I kind of knew you'd be able to, because this is the sort of game we're doing that. Yeah, no, it's going to punish you for it. But I love that there's an achievement for it as well. That, that just adds extra, yeah chef's kiss on top but uh, that is going to be it for this episode i really do hope you enjoyed i hope you enjoyed all of the for sciencing of the new weapons i am actually quite impressed with the tesla i didn't think i was going to be based on how it how it, its initial testing uh looked and, and the base stats but no i think that's definitely got a place i kind of want to know what a, a size plus version of it is going to be like uh, i am in love with the new reactors obviously and uh, the next one i would say is going to go into the frost fire we're going to get the uh, the both of these these are now going to be our command mech so with that in mind and given that the uh, mr green is currently dual energy and rocket and frost fire we're going to keep frost fire with a slow and uh, and uh, an energy weapon but we might change out the type of energy weapons we're going for there's a lot to play around with this but uh given that mr green is basically going to be replacing the shepherd's role as a command mech pop your name suggestions down below and while you're down there if you are enjoying the series well consider massaging those lovely buttons saint algorithmus is always very happy when you do but that is going to be it from me so until next time from me all of our mechs our expanding roster of mechs and indeed our expanding roster of pilots do take care engineers <laughs>